What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today was a very big day. Today we heard from the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell and today he made it very clear that we have reached maximum employment, the economy is very strong, and the need for additional stimulus from them is not needed at this time. And they plan on tapering their monetary policy even faster than before. This is going to reduce the amount of stimulus that is pumped back into the economy. Now, why does this matter? This is very important. But why does the Federal Reserve and what they just said, why does this matter so much? It's actually pretty simple. So, are we going to get stimulus checks in 2022? And where are these stimulus checks actually going to come from? That's the question that a lot of people have because we've seen a lot of rumors. We've seen a lot of reports that stimulus checks just aren't coming in 2022. And if they do, they're not gonna come from the federal government. But here's what we know. Right now, today matters so much because of not exactly what was said uh, in general, but the specifics of what was said. So Jerome Powell outlined how lower income earners and those on fixed incomes are the ones being mostly impacted by this economy. He said, high inflation is causing many families to not be able to afford food and to put gas in their cars. And he stated that he sees inflation going up in the short term. And he also made it very clear he expects inflation will be higher than they anticipate for December of 2022. So to break that down, He's expecting inflation to go up a little bit higher and instead of dropping back down to where they once expected or were anticipating, it's going to be up a little bit. So he's already bearish on the direction of inflation and this isn't good because additional stimulus checks in 2022, they really were tied to what we saw with inflation. If we saw runaway inflation or higher inflation than 7%, which is where we are currently at, this was not going to be a, an easy pass for a 50-50 split Senate. And right now, it's Senator Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema that are really putting the, the brakes on for the Build Back Better Act. Now, here's the other thing, and this is one of the other reasons why stimulus is potentially going to be stopped or at least slowed for the time being. Currently, President Biden is in discussions, or at least the reports are saying that he's in discussions with Senator Joe Manchin. Those are the two people, it's pretty much the White House and Senator Joe Manchin. Those are the ones that are having talks about the upcoming Build Back Better Act and what will be included in it. Senator Joe Manchin, he's already stated multiple times he's opposed to the Build Back Better Act and any additional stimulus to people that do not need it. Just to give you an idea, Senator Joe Manchin was opposed to sending $1,400 stimulus checks to the people in the first time. The reason for that, because people making $400,000, $250,000, $150,000 didn't need a $1,400 stimulus check. They should be perfectly fine. So the likelihood of him supporting a bill that has a massive stimulus check included is seen as almost out of the question just because it's going to go to people that may not need it. But I want to be very clear on this. This doesn't mean no stimulus will be included in the next bill or whatever bill we see, right? Whether it's the Build Back Better Act or something else, I don't know. But here's what reports are telling us. Reports this morning indicate that Senator Joe Manchin, he opposed the child tax credit payments. So that's not where stimulus is going to come from. But as of right now, okay, as of right now, what we are seeing is that we could, yeah, the child tax credit payments were, were cut from the negotiations. But we know that expanding Medicare is out of the question as well. This is something that uh, Senator Joe Manchin doesn't support. But President Biden's promise of $200 a month for Social Security beneficiaries has been brought up multiple times. It's been brought up and that's what's bringing up the question of passing a bill to provide a one-time payment instead to people on fixed income and those that have lower incomes. Now, 
and this this is I know some people are gonna be upset by this but this is what the report okay I, I read a report today that said if uh, if anything gets passed for Social Security beneficiaries or lower income households they're kind of just lumping the two together what they're saying is we wouldn't see $200 a month for an entire year or $2,400. That's not what we'd see. The reports are indicating that potentially passing a one-time payment, get this, of $250. $250. Now, the purpose of that isn't to, to uh, take away from President Biden's promise. That's not the reason behind this. Really, the reason behind this is this is just so another way for seniors for lower income households to help pay for groceries and gas in times of high inflation. That's it. That's really it. Now, I, and I understand this is, it's so frustrating that you, maybe you voted for uh, President Biden because he promised that you're gonna get $200 a month in as a social security boost. Well, it hasn't happened. He also promised up to $10,000 in student debt forgiveness, which that hasn't happened either. But that would be a huge stimulus as well. And just today, there was another memo that was sent to President Biden stating that he needs to turn over the, the letter or the memo of, you know, can he, does he have the legal authority to forgive student debt? We still don't know because the last thing that we saw was pretty much redacted. The whole thing was redacted blacked out. So we don't know exactly what would happen there. But according to lawmakers, that would be a huge win for people with student debt because they can take that money that they would have originally had to pay, which would technically stimulus, and they can put it into something like you know, savings, investments, retirement, building a business, buying a house, you know, paying off debt, right? All these things that would help them not only today, but in the future. So we'll see what happens, but the reports as of right now are as far as a stimulus check in the normal sense where you just open up the mail and hey, there's a check or you check your bank account. Oh, awesome, got 1400 bucks. That's probably not gonna happen in 2022, but in a roundabout way of getting stimulus or money to the American people, that could happen, okay? We also know, and I brought this up last week, I believe as well, and that what we are hearing is that states could end up getting additional money to help get us through this pandemic. And you're probably thinking, well, my state, they just screw us all over, you know, every single time. They never give us money. But here's what you need to understand. People are still out of work and need money. Businesses are closing down temporarily because of COVID and they need help holding on to their employees so that they don't just leave. Travel is being impacted, and states that are seeing less revenue because of uh, less tourists, they need more money. And obviously, the states, they just need additional money to help fight COVID, right? But here's the thing. If states receive money from the federal government through some type of pandemic relief, the reason I say pandemic relief is because some, uh, some reports, some experts are already saying we're seeing that we're coming back down. And if you go and check the, the charts uh, or the graphs from uh, the John, um, but uh, di different different websites for like COVID cases with well, John Hopkins, um, like if you go and see these and you look, our COVID cases shot up and now they're coming back down. This is seen as good news. Deaths are still up, but we normally lag about seven to 14 days. So that's kind of what we're seeing there. But if states receive more money and they have a surplus of cash, then, and I reported this last week, then this is when the states could potentially propose a stimulus check, which California has done, essential worker or hazard pay. We've seen this in many states. Reducing state taxes. This is something that Florida has proposed. Uh, pay increases for state employees. Many states, many states have already passed these. And there's other forms of stimulus as well, right? Teacher bonuses, teacher uh, your retention payments that they call them, right? They're throwing out different words, but it's the same thing. It's a stimulus check. That's all it really is, but it's coming from the state level. So a lot of these things could really help you, 
but also they provide a big boost to the economy within the state. So that's what states are really looking at at this time. But again, if Democrats decide, you know what, let's scrap the whole Build Back Better Act, let's just go forward with a COVID relief bill, it's probably gonna put more money into the state's pockets where they can then go and distribute the money as they see fit. And that's kind of what we're seeing as more likely option moving forward than passing the Build Back Better Act. Now, and I know many people are in dire need of additional stimulus checks. The only problem is that at this time, there's no overwhelming support within the Senate to provide them. We're not getting a major push from the White House to pass this. Uh, the Federal Reserve seems to be against any stimulus at this time, and they're actually gonna be reducing. Uh, and the American people see, honestly, we, we seem to be the last people on a list of priorities at this point. I, I know I am, but are you getting sick and tired of this as well? But let me know down in the comment section below. Now, I wanna get your input on something, okay? Because I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, what do we do if we're not getting stimulus? What do we do if I can't work? What do we do if uh, I'm not getting as many hours? I'm just not making as much money. What can I do? What's out there? Well, for those of you that don't know, one of the things that I've done over the past 15 years, uh, actually what, 17 years I think at this point? I can't even remember. But I've built multiple businesses online. Some are e-commerce, some are service-based, others I just you know I sold websites, right? Pretty much done it all, except for you know adult stuff. Now, over the past two years, I've helped thousands of people get started with their own online business as well. It's very easy, you can start with pretty much nothing and have no money, and you can start making money. Here's my question to you. Would you like to learn different ways to make money online? Now, some of the things that I've done in the past, uh, and I can teach you these as well. Okay, I'll do some videos on these, and I haven't done these uh, in about two years. Since the whole pandemic really started, uh, since I was you know, trying to helping people with, you know, getting, you know, uh, whether it's uh, uh, EIDL loans, uh, making sure they got their stimulus money, you know, keeping you updated on what was going on. Since I started doing that, I haven't really talked much about the businesses that I do have outside of YouTube. Now, YouTube is one of the ways I do make money. Um, you know, obviously that's, you know, that's obviously one of the things that I do that you may not, if you don't know that, yeah, I, I do get paid uh, for very little for every view that I get. It's not much, but as you, you know, make more videos, you get more views, uh, the money adds up. But I also do things like I sell on eBay and Amazon. I still do that. Um, you know, in the past, I've sold services on Fiverr, Craigslist, Facebook, and, and other websites as well. Uh, I still sell online courses on sites like Teachable, Kajabi, and even Udemy.com. Um, so that might be something that you're interested in, in as well. But just let me know if you have an interest in any of this stuff because I am very open to uh, teaching people how to do some of the stuff that I, I either do now or I've done in the past. So let me know if you're interested in this and I will put some videos together to teach you how to do this. I do have some courses, um, but you don't need a course. And just to be 100% clear, I will promote some of my courses. Okay, uh, coming up, I'm gonna promote some of my courses. But here's the thing. A course, you can get all the same information online. The only difference is a course condenses all the information, puts it all together in a very neat packaged product. So if you wanna spend 100 hours to learn how to sell products on, on Amazon or do wholesale or do, uh, you know, let's say private label from China or from a manufacturer here in the US, you can spend hundreds of hours doing that. Or you can buy a course for $197 and you can learn the exact same thing. So it really comes up to what do you have more of, time or money? So that's my little pitch on that, but and I'm not gonna pitch you and sell you on a course today. It's something that you know we will work on in the future if you guys are interested in that. So please let me know down in the comment section below. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.